Um, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for this, this very, very interesting introduction. I think only one third or 50% of participants had a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, first of all, I would congratulate to the organizers to, to, to be able to bring together such a very, very uh, diverse and very exciting group of, um, I wouldn't say students only, participants in a very dire and very um, dramatic, exciting moment um, of, our, um, of our global European existence. And it's not an accident that many of you, so most of you are from this crisis hidden um, areas and, and regions um, like Ukraine and Russia, Russia, and, um, and, and what we call the Western Balkans. Of course, um, of course, Asia as well, and India and Iran, and, um, and only a very few people are interested in this fantastically exciting um, discussion um, from, from, from the Western, the core Western countries. I hope it is going to change because we would need them. Now, before I, I give you um, my short introduction, I would like to ask um, the mayor of, of Kyrgyzag, Dila Bashti, who is, who is um, a supporter and, and an old um, colleague and friend of the Institute, to, to say a few words. If Bela is here, I'm not sure. Um, is is Bela? No? Or maybe he is going to join us. Yes, today. I am. Oh, Bela. Yes, I'm yes, here. Please. Yes, so, I'm please, showing uh, you. Bela Bashti, um, mayor of, of Kursag. We are sitting here online in this um, a, interesting little new institute called the Institute of Advanced Studies, Kursak, and very close to his office. Uh, but we have been working together um, the last 20, 25 years already before the institute was established. Bela, the floor is yours. So thank you very much. Hi, friends, and hi, everybody at the Winter School. Uh, it's just a pleasure to be there on the global display from the small town of Kursak. Uh, I don't know how much you know about our town. It's a small one on the border to Austria and the very western corner of Hungary, so about 240 kilometers away from the capital. And I can say uh, that life in Kursig is a little bit different than in capitals. And maybe this is uh, the main point where we can add something to this dialogue. First of all, I'm very proud and very lucky that uh, this winter school Winter School's hosting server is there in Kursag. <laughs> and, and we are very proud of the Institute uh, and of, of, of the organizations uh, which organize uh, this Winter School and all those, also the Summer School in the summer. I hope very that uh, several, uh, several of your can be there in the summer, also in person, in a natural way, not only on the monitors. So uh, welcome and uh, at the same time an invitation to the summer maybe we will see better times. As you maybe know, uh, here in Hungary, it is 10 o'clock. I don't know, <laughs> maybe in some places of the world is different, uh, but uh, what, what doesn't depend on, on time is that we have uh, an election campaign in Hungary. Maybe you, maybe you have heard from it. And that's why I, I myself also have very, direct impressions uh, about people's life uh, today in my town. And I think, of course, for a, mayor, for a mayor, the most important questions uh, under the global level and under the things we can discuss global is what's going on local in the different localities and especially in Kosek. And uh, I can report you that Kosek is a little bit back uh, from COVID the restaurants, the, the common places are uh, open again, and uh, people have the hope to come back to their normal life. And I wouldn't say the old life or the new life for, for our people in the small town on, on the scale, how they reflect uh, on the world's uh, issues and what, what, what uh, everything happens in the world, uh, they just have normal. <laughs> and, and this normal is maybe also a little bit changing. And uh, of course, we need uh, these discussions with you and with uh, several corners of the world uh, to, to compare our normal life to, to the normal life in other countries, to, to see uh, the ways uh, how you manage uh, the challenges. And uh, 
I, I think in Hungary, there is a little bit uh, hope and, and maybe the spring is also coming. And uh, I can see that people want back their normal life, but they are also open to change in different ways, uh, especially on terms of sustainability. But sustainability on the small uh, people doesn't mean the same than sustainability on the, on the, on the glo global scale, I think. For, for them, sustainability is uh, what we can work together. Do we have our work in places? Migration on our level means how many people comes from the east corner of the same country, so internal in Hungary, to the border to get work in Austria. So everything what we discuss in uh, such uh, conferences and winter schools has a very local level, what we, uh, uh, by, by, by meeting the people, uh, also can reflect. Uh, and that's why uh, I, I think uh, I can maybe add a special uh, view to the, to, the, to the issues, the view of the mayor. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little bit sad because I cannot stay the whole time uh, in the winter school, at least at 11 I have to say goodbye, uh, but I uh, really, uh, I, I'm, I'm really happy uh, to, to have this possibility in the, in the late afternoon hours I will go again to the people, to the households, because in election campaign we do that, and uh, now in the early morning in Hungarian time, I can get uh, some impressions, some informations, what's going on in, in the different corners of the world. So thank you for this possibility. And a very, very special thanks to the organizers that I have seen in the program that you have the very interesting issues and topics, but you also get the possibility to have a look into the very colorful cultural life of Kosek. Monica Mata will show you the renewed uh, buildings in Kosek. Mijay Zoltan and Uwesher will show you the very nice uh, musical life of Kosek. So I, I hope uh, even if in, in this version of meeting, not to be there in person in Kosek, you will get some impressions why we are happy to live there in this small corner of the world. So welcome to Kosek in this way <laughs> and uh, enjoy your hours together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for, for joining us. I think it's very important that we have a very good um, amalgamation of, of participants in that moment of our history to change views and to, to understand each other better than before. Now, now before, uh, again, I would say a few words. I would like to ask uh, Professor Miklos Rethait, who is um, the president of the Hungarian UNESCO um, Committee, um, his his um, thousand um, um, lights, um, because um, he's a very important um, person in in our life in in, in Kursag and in the institute. Um, we are also um, a UNESCO chair. We have a UNESCO chair here. It's called um, cultural heritage management and sustainability. And we have been working with Miklos for about 10 years. And I also serve in the Hungarian National Committee of UNESCO, which gives us a little, um, how to say it, more visibility globally speaking, but also some kind of um, financial support and, and institutional support. Um, and this, this, this world is changing, including UNESCO. And we try to make it as, um, transparent as possible um, to, to show Hungarian Central European um, values, heritage as much as possible, and also to receive messages from, from the outside world. So Miklos, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ferenc. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen and uh, dear students, thank you for the invitation uh, to join the opening ceremonies of the fourth most uh, winter school. I presume that many of you know the uniqueness in the structure of the UNESCO, which is the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. It is the network of the national commissions. And as the president of the Hungarian National Commissions, as you have heard earlier, now I have the privilege to welcome the organizers, the participants, 
and wish plenty of fresh ideas and fruitful discussions in the next four days. Truth and consequences, you can read at the front page of the pamphlet of the Winter School. Truth is a statement which conforms to reality. The antonyms of truth is fiction, uncertainty, make-believe, falsity. Since we live in an uncertain world, the real existence and value of the truth seem to be questionable. A universally acceptable true statement should correspond to facts, and this is the basis. In its meeting should be unequivocal, should be disseminated by a person of universal reverence, must be accepted with broad agreement, and has to have historical significant, significant content. It is no wonder that to the truth as such is the object of numerous discussions and debates. Who could dare to word a statement of global importance when the present day society is overfed by fantastic stories of complete nonsenses? To make, to make a small detour, the achievement of truth can be referred as justice. Joseph Pieper published a book in 1966 entitled the four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance. He quotes Thales saying that the nation where the very rich as well as the very poor people are missing, this nation is ruled by justice. People identifies three basic forms of justice. Reciprocal justice, justitia commutativa, the justice one person owes another. Distributive justice or distributive form of justice, justitia distributiva, the justice of uh, just, uh, the justice a community owes to the individual persons. And the legal form, justitia legalis, this is the justice individual persons owe to the community. Now, it was an interesting task to analyze the structure of the higher education, defining the positions of the actors as government, ministry, leadership of the institution, students and professors, following the three forms of justice. The conclusion was that since injustice is widely accustomed in the world, graduates of the higher education institutions should be prepared by conscientious professors to start their careers as truthful women and men who grant above the obligations. Society needs conscious individuals of generosity and broad-mindedness. The other key word of the meeting is the hybrid, hybrid risk, hybrid future. The definition of hybrid Hybrid is a plant or animal that has been produced from two different types of plant or animal in order to get better characteristics. Now the hybrid vehicle combines the electric motor and the combustion engine because both of them side, both of them yields specific advantages. I quote from the conference leaflet, our hybrid features digital rewriting, social distancing, and redefined lifestyles after COVID-19. Unfortunately, it's too early to speak after COVID-19, we are still in, also hopefully at the very end. And our hybrid features are not the combination of two good ones, and, but how to use our collective experience in this wisdom to overcome the shortcomings of the pandemic. Examples, one meets a friend, colleague, or everyone and approach each other ambiguously with full of uncertainty due to the changes in the form of handshake, quote unquote. Should we shake hands, which would be the instinctive sign of friendship and benevolence, indicating that our hand is free of weapon? No, it is not recommended. 
macro to knuckle encounter is disgraceful because the forward moving hand with the clenched fist is belligerent and looking for a surface to hit. Elbow to elbow greeting is a clumsy movement. It looks as birds would lift in their wings. In religious services of certain churches, the minister invites the congregation greet each other with the sign of the peace. And the answer is, let's be peace among us, which was followed by a smile and handshake. And now it remains the smile from a certain distance with the conviction that also peace could prevail without handshake, but everyone is eagerly waiting to express the limitless wish for peace with embracement. An embracement, a more intimate way of greeting is embracement, especially between men of close family relations, between brothers, between father and son. A good friend of ours died suddenly in his 50s years ago. On the memorial service, his brother mentioned in his remembrance how good feeling he keeps in contrast to his great loss that on the last occasion they met, they embraced each other, what they usually rarely did earlier. At year of 83 to meet my younger brother or wave goodbye to my grown up son, I cannot resist to embrace them. Also, I am fully aware of the two sided risks. Truth and consequences. I'm sure that the carefully selected program and speakers of the Force Most Winter School, in spite of the general uncertainty, will help all participants to verify the ingredients of truth of global importance and to enjoy their beneficial or correct their harming consequences. All the best, Leo. Thank you. Thank you. I would also like to thank uh, Professor Miklosheteli for a wonderful, wonderful introduction, for a wonderful speech. And uh, now we have online also uh, Sean Cleary. Oh, oh sorry, Sean... Ivana, may I just... Yes, I, I missed a few, as I said, I would like to just give a few uh, points to, to the, to the forth, forthcoming four, four days. First of all, I, a couple of words about this institute. You might... Um, have been able to take a look at our, our um, website. This is a very unusual institute, first one um, um, in the in this um, genre of uh, advanced studies in Hungary. And our, our one of the main aims was to bring together um, disciplines um, and researchers, young and old senior professors from very different fields to discuss issues like what we are discussing this week but also to do research in a multi and interdisciplinary way um, about complex um, problems. First and second is to use this new knowledge that we try to create in order to improve life around us. Um, we are in a very small city, so one of our major concerns is how small cities can survive in a, in a bird of, of, of turbo capitalism. We had very bad experience for the first 25 years after a systemic change after 1890. Um, this wonderful small, small and medium-sized city started to disappear to become very um, um, invisible and insignificant. So one of the ideas we, we, we worked out here is to create new tools, new methodology, how to help them to show their values and become dynamic and attractive places again. So we have a program here which is based upon the new knowledge, but it's about development, um, regional and city development, and we call it craft. We're not going to talk about this this week too much, but we have a very strong um, um, research and developmental group here working on smaller micro regions and also a larger um, regional development like Central European cooperation. Um, so we have a... Um, 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 a program for non-Hungarian scholars, um, um, a stipendium, a research grant program. 
um, for young and for senior scholars. And we are cooperating with local regional universities. So we are running an MA program in um, uh, international uh, studies, of course, in, in English. Um, and so I'm very happy that um, this thing is, is, is going on. I'm very glad that you, you are with us. And um, I'm also very glad that I can see most of your faces. We had a little frustration um, the last couple of years. We had many, many, many um, participants from many different countries, but we did not have the chance to talk to them. And this passivity should be overcome. Of course, we um, try our best. And this is um, just a warning for ourselves that we should concentrate on the topic and leave give a chance to everyone to express herself or himself. The most important part of this uh, winter school is dialogue. It's not um, a classical um, winter or summer university, but we have a summer university as well. We want people to express views and we want to learn from each other. This is what is missing very much in our world. It's missing in our higher education system. It's, it's missing in our public life. Um, and it's missing in, in, in global politics, as we can, um, we, will, we will talk about it. So my very few remarks, um, or rather questions, um, are the following. Um, I think we face a, a, a global problem which has very serious consequences. This is the undisputed truth in plural. Maybe we should have given um, our title with a plural not just truth as a singular, but truth in plural. One of the most profound questions my colleagues, uh, colleagues put together for this winter school is, who are we? Um, I think in the last couple of decades, um, humankind and especially our, largely speaking, Western civilization, is in an increasingly way unable to answer this question correctly. I think we are living in bubbles, um, uh, uh, pieces of past realities, greatness, achievements, cultural um, um, uh, glory, etc. This is not anymore the case, and it is very difficult to follow changes. Um, a, a, a turbulent and, and very, very complex full of uncertainties, but I think this is our task. This is the task of new, um, the new generation of researchers and the new generations of institutions like our Advanced Study Institute to try um, to, to, to tackle complexities. And this is why we need the cooperation among the different disciplines, among people with very different backgrounds, also including practitioners, Sometimes we try and we, we insist to in, involve politicians, diplomats, journalists into our discussion. It's getting harder and harder. It's not easy because we don't live in the world of dialogue as we used to in the 80s. And I will talk about it later during this summer in the winter school. Um, 30 years ago, we had a very different um, situation. Everyone, everything was based in dialogue in, in Europe and for, even for former Soviet Union. And we have achieved a lot as civil society um, organizers, activists, and also scholars, um, thanks to this, this dialogue. This dialogue almost completely disappeared. We have monologues, as one of um, American leaders just mentioned yesterday, is a megaphone diplomacy. Politicians in a, in a severe crisis do not exchange views they use a megaphone and yelling and shouting what they think about the other or about the country. So the second question, um, sub, sub issue, is there a Russian truth vis-a-vis -vis a Ukrainian or Central European or Western? If so, what can we do about it? Why don't we discuss it? Is there an international community and does it possess adequate representation there? Or it is belonging to the past? Where is the UN? I haven't heard anything from the United Nations in the last couple of the 
weeks to months concerning this deepening, very severe and very, very threatening crisis. In the present situation of global anarchy and uncertainty, can intimidation and threat of war, as well as escalation of violence and migration, help to speed up thinking about global or European public good. So what happened to the notion of global or transnational public good? Who is representing it? Who is raising questions about it? I guess we certainly should. In any case, whose truths we trust as truths? It's a personal question, my personal question to you to think about. It. Just your parents, your friends, your school, your city, your country, your nation. Ooh. Only three decades um, have passed from the global peacemaking and anti-nuclear war truce of President Gorbachev to the new truce of respect enforcing intimidating truce of President Putin, showing the old new nuclear war capacities combined with territorial demands of post-Soviet Russia. So whose truce is, is the truce? Both? And we need to discuss it, I think. How did we, how, how, how we came into the situation? And we need to talk about the evaporating truce of the West. There is UN this new conflict, toughest military threat after a potential conflict between East and West after the Second World War. The undiscussed and swept under the carpet differences between truth in plural is in my understanding the core of the new old Cold War or rather permanent hybrid war as suggested by Western leaders calling um, as the new normal. Shall we respect it? This situation as the new normal? That's surrender, in my understanding. And a very, very dangerous swift switch in, in, in our vocabulary and in, in, in our discourse. So this, I think, should all be discussed. These issues should, I think, permanently um, be put on the table for for university students, for intellectuals. It should come back to, to, to the media, vis-a-vis -vis, um, megaphone journalism and, 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 and fake, fake news journalism. Um, I understand that this is a very precarious, dangerous moment. And, but I'm saying it might sound illusionary, idealistic, or at least not very realistic. I believe me that um, open discourse um, is of crucial importance. Asking questions and, and not giving up the attempt to create real dialogue is probably um, the first step towards a, a new understanding of who we are, which I think um, it's a very big question, and I'm not sure myself if I could, I would be able to give a correct and comprehensive answer. So maybe you help me, we help, we help each other to get closer to, um, to answers to these questions with one warning. One of our colleagues always warns us that there are situations and there is no real solution, no satisfactory solution. We call it wide questions or wide problems. Even in that case, we researchers, intellectuals, responsible citizens should try to look for solutions. Maybe it's not possible. Not, not all of the equations have solutions, as you know, but we should go on and try. And this is where we are. So I would finish here.